This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan. With your host, Bradley Summers. And get the latest from Alpena Community College with ACC President Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Bradley Summers, and this morning our first guest is Jeff Meaden from Pace, Northeast Michigan. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Brad. How you doing this morning? Doing well. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, you know, I know reading in the newspaper, there's been a lot of really great things that are put out about the PACE program and PACE coming to Alpena. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the big things that we want to talk about, which is one of the latest uh, news articles that was out there, was some of the exciting news about your building. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the first news publications are over a year ago now as uh, they started to investigate options for a building, uh, talking about building on Chisholm and uh, then looking at Ripley Street Station. And we actually kind of went back to the drawing board when I was hired in January and uh, decided on a building on US 23 South, so in the Bear Point Shopping Plaza, next to Big Lots and Joanne Fabrics, what used to be Peebles. Yeah. So great building, uh, built in early 2000s and uh, has some modern amenities and a good shell for us to build something great. Yeah, and it's a large uh, facility as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it's just right, actually, 17,000 square feet. Um, so for us, you know, about 5,000 square feet of it will be for clinic space, 4,000 square feet feet or so for administrative space, a uh, day center, another 4,000 or so square feet, and then uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, the kitchens, all of those things within one site, which is so exciting. You know, and I'm really amazed too, when you go onto the website and you look at uh, the services that are offered and the programs mm -hmm. that are offered through this program, there's a plethora of different options that, you know, anybody over the age of 55, Yep. Um, that is eligible for the program, mm -hmm. um, you know, can take advantage of here. And, you know, and we were just talking even before the show that, you know, Alpena has an aging population. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us to be able to do things or for our community to be able to respond to that need, you know, it, it only shows how important a program like PACE is. Absolutely. Yeah, PACE, I mean, pr PACE is the program for the all-inclusive care for the elderly. So as far as the individuals that we're going to serve uh, age 55 and older, um, which is actually kind of a low threshold for elderly. Yeah. Um, but in addition, uh, one of the big key criteria is these individuals meet the state's need for nursing level of care. So if they did choose to, they could go and live in a nursing home. A lot of people don't want to choose that, mm -hmm. right? No one really is excited to go live in a nursing home. So the objective of PACE is to allow individuals to age in place and live in their own homes. And we provide the support and service of services for them to safely do that. Yeah, and that's through rest respite care and outpatient care yep. and, and helping navigate the, the convoluted medical system <laughs> that they have to you know navigate through. Yeah, so that's the, the thing that's unique with the PACE model is it's kind of a one-stop shop. So your primary care physician is within the PACE program. We coordinate all specialty appointments. When you do go to the hospital, that follow-up is done by the PACE team. When you need physical therapy, occupational therapy, that's done on site. And any of the other services, a lot of the individuals in PACE programs are Medicaid eligible, mm -hmm. meaning meals and transportation and all of those those things that you'd be eligible with a Medicaid insurance program, PACE would then provide. So it really is, uh, we're able to optimize and really, I, I don't like the word, but it is a good word to describe it. We exploit the benefit of insurance yeah. and be able to take every penny of it and put it back in the participant's pocket. Yeah, and a lot of these are probably benefits that most of them may not even know that they have available to them. Well, it may not have available to them and in the community may not have the resources that they need to get to those. So as a participant of the program, we provide it. Yeah, and so you know, with with all the programs and offerings, which we'll we'll touch on just in a, just a minute here, but you know, what are some of the biggest needs that you're seeing, you know, in our community that is uh, that the PACE program is really going to be more the most beneficial to the population? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of the initial work that was done to kind of look at the community. I mean, we know Northeast Michigan is an aging community. Um, some of the counties that we're going to serve with PACE Northeast Michigan are amongst the oldest, if not the 
oldest counties um, within the entire state of Michigan. Um, so that's the first you know target. The second is just geography. Um, we are not we don't have a high population density. So individuals who are aged and require these higher level of services um, often can't get those services because of the distance to it. Um, Pace has our bus that we're mm -hmm. going to pick them up and mm -hmm. transport them to those services. Um, and there are a lot of incredible resources in Alpena. Pace is going to complement those resources. So um, there is incredible health care providers with our hospital system, our federally qualified health care centers, but Pace will be there as a partner in care. Awesome. So you're helping actually connect some of the uh, you know the people that are in the program, yeah. you're helping them connect to the medical specialists and yeah. the, the, the specialized care that Alpena currently has. Absolutely, so if someone has been seeing a physician uh, in one of the clinics in town for 20 years and all of a sudden an event happens, they have a stroke, there's an accident, something like that, and they need that next level of care, that's where a referral to PACE in coordination with the, the participant, the patient's primary care provider will really allow us to provide seamless transitions of care and keep people in their homes. That's the one thing yeah. that it kind of fills my bucket is no one wants to lose or leave their home. Um, and PACE, their objective is to safely allow participants to live in their home. That's excellent. Yeah. You know, and, and with, with the programs that you do, um, that you are offering, um, talk a little bit about the adult day health center option too that's involved with this. Yeah, absolutely. So if you think of a, a, a senior center options, and we have an incredible senior center mm -hmm. here in Alpena, most counties have one. This is that plus an, another step up. Um, full kitchen on site, healthcare resources on site. And remember these participants, some of them have dementia, they have mobility issues. Mm -hmm. The PACE Center is designed to accommodate those. Um, and to really allow individuals to um, come to the day center three, four, five times a week, whatever's decided by the PACE team and the participant, um, and transportation to the center and back home is there. So this isn't only a great resource for the participants, but think about the caregivers at home. Yeah. If I was taking care of an elderly mother, um, and I work, right, um, PACE can provide that service to you know, bring the participant to the day center, take care of them under medical supervision, and bring them home at the end of the day. Wow, that's an incredible resource. It is, it is. So if I was out there and I was 55 or older and wondering and inquiring about how to become, you know, part of this program mm -hmm. or to find out if I'm eligible, how do I go about doing that? So until we're open and until we're able to enroll, I would, I think the biggest resource is the Pace Association of Michigan's website. Um, PAM or P Pace Association of Michigan Michigan has an abundance of resources talking about eligibility criteria, uh, where there are PACE centers, there are different geographies, and we've never had a PACE center in Northeast Michigan before. Um, when we do open, we will have enrollment coordinators to answer those questions, to answer those awesome. phones, bring you in for a site tour, and talk about the PACE model and whether or not it's a fit for the for the individual who's interested in it. Well, Jeff, you know, it's it sounds like it's, it's going to be an absolutely incredible opportunity for this community and especially the residents that live here you know quality of life and improving that quality of life is so vital and you know more services like yours that are being brought to this area are just you know welcome with open arms and you know thank you oh, so thank much you for your time yep. you know and effort and everything you're doing and your your newly formed board of directors <laughs> yes. and all of them too for putting in the time to make sure that something like this is here and it's stable and it's sustainable we're very excited I mean we've hit a couple of the big milestones with our applications with our submissions to both to the feds and the state and our next step is to do that ground breaking ceremony and then a grand opening ceremony. Awesome. I can't wait to be a part of that. <laughs> we'll, we'll invite you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. And thank you so much for your time being here today. Appreciate it. Stay tuned after the break for Sophie Stewart from the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Welcome back everyone. Our next guest is Sophie Stewart from the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Hey Sophie. Hey Brad. Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much. Good well, to see you. Good to see you. I know last <laughs> time you were you were on, you were with Daniel and you know I know your uh, your your voice, you had a little yes. laryngitis, so <laughs> We didn't actually get to, you know, talk as much. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, I'm really excited you're here and thank your voice you. is back. Yes, thank goodness. <laughs> um, so we really never got the introduction yeah. um, because, you know, you've been in Alpena for a little, little over three months, yep. or as you put it, 100 days at 100 work days. Yep. and a few more in the community. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, as the new education and outreach specialist, yes. 
um, at the um, at the sanctuary, um, I'm sure you're you're extraordinarily full and your plate is just overfilling during this time of year. Yeah, definitely. Because of the need and the kids are out of school, so it's that for sure. looking for something to do to educate. You know, so I know there's a lot of people that are you know coming to your organization yeah. looking for fun things to do and yeah. um, talk a little bit about some of your summer programming. Okay. So we have all sorts of programming for kids ages 8 to 18. Um, we don't go much younger than that because a lot of our programs are either mm -hmm. decent amount of the day or the whole day. Um, so we just had our first one last week, which was Underwater Robot Academy. So the kids did three days with the ROVs. So the first day they were learning about them and building the kits that we have at the museum. The second day they were designing their own. And then the third day, they were using their designed robots to compete in a variety cool. of tasks. So very similar to the mate competition that we host every year, just on a much smaller mm -hmm. scale and for kids that don't necessarily um, participate in those classes at school. So that was um, re received very well by the community. And now next week, we're diving into our archaeology programming. So we still have some availability for kids ages 13 to 17. Or, or I'm sorry, 11 to 13 in that range. Um, so we'll have a two-day camp. I have a background in maritime archaeology. That's how I initially got connected to the sanctuary. And so my goal is to introduce kind of the fun but still scientific aspect of what we're doing at the sanctuary to the kids. So we're doing a two-day program next week and then we're gonna be snorkeling yeah. later in the summer. So we're getting kids into the tank, which is gonna be super exciting um, for the first time. And then we'll have our outside and unplugged programs for the high schoolers as well, getting them out into nature and off of their phones, <laughs> please. Um, so that'll be really fun throughout the summer. So we have programs through July and August. Um, and then we wrap things up a couple weeks before school starts again so that they have that time to really enjoy their vacation. Yeah, and, and, and oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, it, you're good. Because it's, it's so vital. Yeah, you know, definitely. That young people in our area learn to be accountable yeah. for the resources that we have and learn to appreciate them. Definitely. And get out and enjoy them. We live in an extraordinarily beautiful gorgeous area. area. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for a kid to say they've never really hugged a tree or <laughs> you know like picked a rock out yeah, of the water definitely. or in you know gone to some of the conservancies mm -hmm. or you know just learning how to use a kayak or yeah. snorkel yeah. is so important it is it is between water safety and just appreciation of the community that they live in um, i mean we talk about that about at the sanctuary we have 200 shipwrecks in this area some of which are very very accessible in less than 10 feet of water and people have no idea yeah. like that the portland is 100 yards offshore just north of besser natural area and so that's a great snorkeling spot for families or kayakers or paddle boarders um, so that's one of the ways we're trying to encourage people to get into their sanctuary this summer is to find out from us where those more accessible wrecks are and to go experience them in whatever way they're comfortable. We talk about getting the public and kids in, on, near, and under the water as much as possible. And so the different portions of the sanctuary allow us to do that. So obviously the shipwrecks themselves allow us to get people in, on, and under the water. Um, and then for near, we love the Maritime Heritage Trail that runs right along the river. It talks all about the different um, historic aspects of the town and the lumber mills that used to be there, yeah. the shipwrecks that are related to them. Um, but the, that trail, the signs are all throughout the county. So you'll see them at Rockport, you'll see them at the lighthouses, they're all over the place. I love, as I'm exploring the community, I love every time I find a new one, I'm like, great, look at how big this trail is getting and educating people. And then our third way, obviously, to come experience the sanctuary is to visit the center itself. Um, we have all sorts of Viking groups coming throughout the summer. And so we've got a lot of different visitors from the National Weather Service to um, some sea lamprey exhibits. So there's all sorts of fun things happening, um, not to mention the fact that we're doing a lot of ac uh, freshwater acidification mm -hmm. work. And so we've often got programs talking about that. And we've actually, if anybody's interested, tonight there's a, our next lecture series on the maritime elements of the Underground Railroad is tonight at seven o'clock. Wow. Yeah, which would be pretty exciting. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. So 
it, you know, with uh, um, you know the lecture series and what you're doing to mm -hmm. educate, you know, so many people in this yeah. community, especially the kids who are taking this information and they are, you know, uh, you know, essentially, you know, learning what they're learning with you and learning how to do it safely. Yeah. And then turning around and being able to, you know, one day teach their own kids Definitely. these things. You know, it's it's just amazing. You know, we have the, like you had just gone over, the three ways to get into the sanctuary yeah. and going over, you know, how to do that. And then turning around and being able to, you know, understand, you know, what is around us. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just extraordinarily what you and your team are doing. Yeah, thank you. You had said eight years ago, um, you were in Alpena. Yes. And now, now you're back again. Yes. And which is awesome. And thank <laughs> you for being here. Of course, um, I was excited to get back. You know, as a, as an outreach specialist mm -hmm. and an education specialist, what are some of the, the, what are the biggest needs that you're seeing, yeah. you know, even from that perspective eight years ago to what mm -hmm. it is today? Yeah. I mean, when I was here eight years ago, I was just doing my research project in very limited amount of time in the community. Um, but what I've seen is a lot of growth for young professionals, so people my age coming mm -hmm. to Alpena and really getting involved. And so that makes me really happy. Um, and it made it a lot easier to move here. Um, and But one of the things I'm seeing is the importance of gener a generational shift. So we have this elderly community like you were talking about with your last guest, um, but we want to be passing on that legacy of local history, oral history about family, stuff like that to the younger generations and the appreciation for the area because then that helps the kids become better stewards of it. And so at the sanctuary, we're just trying to figure out ways to do that and bringing the community along for the ride. I'm always so blown away by all the representatives that are on the show from the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Oh, thank you. I, it's just it, it, incredible the passion that you all have, yeah. you know, and the understanding of nature, yeah. and then wanting to see it become and keep it sustainable. Definitely. Um, you know, and you hit the, the nail on the head when you said stewarding. Yeah. You know, that is, uh, I believe, you know, an extraordinarily important part too. Definitely. But definitely something that runs through all of your veins that yeah. are working there because <laughs> it's a it's a mission. And a and a and a you know an extraordinarily important aspect of what you're all doing. Yeah. You know, so. And we're adding to the team. So we oh, have yeah. my I started three months ago and we've had three other new people since then, two from within the community, and then we've had another out of stater like myself, more from the western side of the country, like myself as well, um, coming back to Alpena. So we're very excited to continue to grow and then continue to get more into the community as we grow our staff. Well, I'm excited to be able to continue conversations thank with you. you. Yes, and as well. I thank you so much for thank being you. on the show today. Thank you. And good luck with everything. I appreciate it. You yes, know, with the weather, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> we're find, ramping up for summer. Yeah, well, get into the sanctuary. Get into yes, the water. get in the water. <laughs> I'm but, about to right now. <laughs> thank you so much for your time being thank here you. today. Yeah. And thank you all for joining us. Please stay tuned after the break for the ACC segment. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College. Pleased to have as our guest this morning, Dr. Paige Gordier, VP for Instruction at ACC. Uh, has had a great first year, and uh, welcome, Paige. Thank you. So we're here today to talk about uh, ReConnect. Uh, ReConnect was a, a program that was initiated by uh, Governor Whitmer, and it allows folks who are 21 years and older, right. uh, tuition support, uh, to come back to get a community college credential. And this is a phenomenal opportunity. And we've had folks that have gone through and uh, under ReConnect funding, but we want to make it kind of bring it to uh, people's awareness again because fall semester uh, at ACC begins in late August. So if folks are interested, they might want to know more about ReConnect. And why don't we tell them a little bit more about ReConnect? Okay. ReConnect is a great program. Um, like you said, it's for people 21 and older. And it can be for people who are already in college in an associate program or a certificate program. It can be, it's primarily directed at people who are not currently in college and they have a high school diploma. And it gives them the opportunity to get a certificate or an associate degree basically at no cost for their tuition and fees and contact hours. So it's this 
you know, as you said, the governor is, you know, pushing to get more people back in college to get the certificates and the associate degrees, and ACC has so many programs. We have 73 different associate and certificates that people can engage in. But the goal is that you can come back full-time, you can come back part-time um, to do this so it can work around kind of people's lives now. And ACC offers night classes, online classes. But the real purpose is to give an opportunity for people who didn't either finish their degrees or finish their certificates to do so now. And like I said, it can be, you could come back, you know, to take, you have to take 12 credits in the year total, but you could take six credits one semester and six the other. You know, so it could be a part-time program. Um, and there's no limit really on what programs you choose. So it could be anything, it could be our you know, automotive program, our welding program, our concrete program, or it could be you know, our nursing program. So there's, there's really no limits as long as you're engaged in one of those you know, different programs. Uh, the application is really easy. To be eligible, you have to be 21 or older, a Michigan resident for at least one year, have a high school diploma, and have not yet earned an associate or a bachelor's. So if you've already earned a certificate, that's okay. You can come back at another certificate or associate degree. If you've started you know, your degree years ago, you can come back and you know, those credits, most of the time you will be able to use some of those credits towards your degree. So I keep thinking it's this opportunity for all these people. It's for people who have never come to college um, and this gives them a chance to have everything funded. You know, or it can be people who are already working who want to upgrade their skills. And even for employers, see I think this is a great opportunity in Alpena because we have so many employers who bring in people, you know, a lot of our people start young. They start right out of high school or they get maybe a certificate or a few training classes. You know, employers could work with their employees right now and for no cost, if they're 21 and older, they could go back, take classes, you know, upgrade, get new certificates and our you know, our work development program. If there's employers out there who would like us to develop a certificate program, you know, a temporary one even, we could do that and it will be funded under the ReConnect program. To apply, like I said, you just have to be 21 and older. Um, you do have to fill out a FAFSA, the Federal Financial Aid Application. And they do that because, you know, it's the government, they want to save money. So they're going to give the student Pell Grants first or any scholarships that are eligible first, and then Michigan Reconnect picks up the rest of it. Last dollar, they call that. Yep, last dollar. I had to look that up, and yeah. I'm like, well, last dollar. So that's a good thing. It means everything will be covered, but they, there is a little bit of paperwork, but it's been a very fast process. Um, if you go to the website, it'll tell you once you fill out your initial information, as soon as you hit submit, you're gonna be notified pretty much immediately that you're eligible for this program. So that's been, you know, really good. And it's fun to watch people coming back who've always wanted to be like a nurse or, you know, they want to upgrade their office skills. We have um, a woman from one of the local banks last year I met who was in our computer program class where it was the troubleshooting class. And it was very funny because she was, you know, she was probably, I probably shouldn't say, but she was probably about 30. And you have the 19 year old students, and she was just killing it. She, fix like four computers and some of them couldn't find the power <laughs> cord yet so you can see the advantage of the skill development and reconnect provides that free funding so that's really a nice thing um i'm trying to think no i can uh see that i've seen that uh in some of the reconnectors that i've talked with the uh can people graduate from high school many of them don't know what they want to do mm -hmm. i mean it's perfectly uh, uh, normal and natural that they, they wouldn't. But by the time they're 25 or 30 and they have, uh, you know, life experience, they may have a family, they may have, you know, the world looks different. And uh, the ReConnect really allows those folks who know where their life is headed and how they want to direct it to uh, come back to school and get into something they know they want to do. Absolutely. And they often do excel, and they often do play this role that you just described, where, you know, they they um, there may be 30 year old person or 35 year old person in with 18 or 19 year old people. Uh, this was in a welding class that I saw, 
and they provide almost like a mentoring or a uh, this is uh, this is the voice of experience. I'm a student like you, but I have some life under my belt, and uh, it is a, a lovely thing to see in a classroom how that can really add to the. Uh, what, what people get out of it, both the young people and the older people. Yeah, I was in an automotive class recently and <laughs> they had a couple who had, I believe, a, a veteran who, you know, at least two veterans in there and another other community member who was a little bit older who had had another career and they're in the automotive program. You know, the two veterans are going to do it as a new career and the other gentleman, I think it's an interest area. And, you know, you could use Reconnect for that too. Obviously, the goal is to get a degree and a certificate, and the governor wants, you know, 60 percent of the population to have that within the next by 2030. So, I just think it's an opportunity to continue to go to school or to pursue an interest. You know, if you'd like automotive, if you are, you know, have your own garage where you do stuff, why not come back, take classes, get a certificate in that, um, learn the new technology. So it's a great opportunity for upgrading, for getting degrees. And you know, our associate degrees, if you want to go on to a bachelor's, there's that opportunity afterwards. That's not funded under Reconnect, but you know, yeah. it's the starting point. Well, thank you. We've got about uh, 20 seconds left. Okay. Uh, um, how, who, who, if a person was watching this and said, yeah, that sounds good, I want to uh, take advantage of that, who would they connect with at ACC? Well, probably I would start with admissions, with Mike Colleen, um, or go on our website and, you know, if you want to talk about the ACC programs, otherwise just go to Michigan Reconnect and fill out the application there. And like I said, it's very brief. I believe you need a social security number and I think that's about all you're going to need for the process, at an email. So Michigan Reconnect to get started. And for any questions about ACC, please contact admissions and Mike Colleen's our expert there. Very good. Thank you, Paige, and thank you for what you've done and are doing for ACC. We appreciate it. And thank you folks for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts Bradley Summers and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Queen Bee's Knees LLC production, a Morgan Murphy Media Company. All rights reserved.